up for discussion in uh, today's video um, is uh, the schematic uh, as a whole here you can see this is the basically the inputs and outputs from the engine control module on the uh, Suzuki SX4 um, clearly this is a lot of material if consider so the circuit of interest for today is item 7 um, is actually the engine coolant temp sensor the ECT um, why am I interested in looking at this? Because of this testing procedure here, is detailed in the manual. Look at that. A short. A dead short across the connector of the engine uh, coolant temp sensor itself. And um, it always leaves me wondering, how do you short something out without actually smoking the, uh, the module if it's a dead short? Well, we'll get to the circuit, look at it in a little bit more detail, and um, we'll actually bring in uh, <laughs> the famous or infamous uh, decade box and actually maybe conduct a wee bit of testing on the uh, car. But before I do, um, I want to bring your attention to one thing. So I wanted to thank uh, one of my pals on YouTube here, uh, Dave Sterl is his handle. That would be uh, Dave Sterling. Dave's out of uh, Belfast, uh, just north of Belfast, uh, on the inlet into Belfast. He's on the north end of that. And uh, Dave was nice enough, actually, to uh, send me a couple of his uh, channel stickers, or his business, his channel, and uh, a nice letter to, uh, to me and my missus. So it was greatly appreciated, Dave. I don't plug nothing on YouTube, but I'm happy to plug anybody that I think puts out this, this kind of quality, um, just because he deserves it for no other reason. Right? Back to the so as I mentioned in the testing, how do you go about shorting this out without actually smoking something <laughs> inside the uh, engine control module itself, item two? Uh, so that's the engine coolant temp sensor. Item, item two is the uh, engine control module itself, the ECM, and of course the associated wiring. So the devil's always in the details, right? Not so uh, uncommon is a, a, five, a five volt power supply actually out to the uh, to multiple sensors that are actually in the car, one of them being the engine coolant temp sensor itself. That resistor right there is what actually saves the ECM and the power supply within the ECM and likely this coupling resistor as far as the monitoring circuit is concerned, basically a voltage monitoring uh, circuit so the ECM can discriminate the actual uh, voltage between the voltage divider circuit here because if you look at the circuit that's exactly what it is you've got the current limiting resistor on the top side here the sensing element the engine coolant uh, temp sensor itself and then it goes directly to ground and you can see that as the the resistance varies and the engine coolant temp sensor the voltage that's picked up by the sensing element at this particular point here would vary and that's how the ECM actually can establish what is actually the engine coolant temperature what I was interested in actually doing <clears throat> is actually conducting the test itself. So we'll go to the vehicle and we'll see if we can actually get these values. We'll hook up the uh, uh, Autel uh, MD802. So you'll see here the details when you do short it, when you short the plug, you should have a value of 130 degrees C. And uh, when you open it, it should go to minus 40. Not so uncommon. I think this approach is actually um, very standard amongst uh, most manufacturers. In addition, um, I'd also like to... No, I actually can remove the temp sensor from the vehicle and actually look at it against the graph and actually do it backwards. So we'll look at the graph here and it gives you a couple of reference points. So what we're talking about is uh, temperature versus the resistance that would be on the sensor itself. And let's actually do it backwards. So through the use of the decade box, what we can do is actually go across the two pins on the sensor plug and what can actually plug in these values and we'll see if we can get the respective 80 degrees and 20 degrees Celsius by plugging in these values from the uh, decade box. And maybe we'll step through a few values just to see it. So there is the engine coolant temp sensor sitting right there on the casting that's actually uh, flanged on in the cylinder head itself. So we'll pop that connector and uh, get hooked up. Okay, so I'm T-pinned in the uh, engine coolant temp sensor connector itself. Obviously, double T-pinning things is uh, not really uh, a safe practice. If it shorts, it can sometimes cause you a great deal of grief. However, 
in this instance, we know that even if you short it, it's not going to be catastrophic. Taking you up, <coughs> we bit your bugger again because the cable is so short. But I've got my decade box actually hooked up and the scan tool. And the value that I'm currently up, set up at on the uh, decade box is actually 2,500 ohms. So if we go to the chart and we check the chart, I selected 2,500, no, just arbitrarily, 2,500 ohms or 2.5K. On the chart here, on the graph, should be 20 degrees. So let's see what it actually says on the on the actual uh, on the scan tool, on the engine coolant temp sensor parameter. So there it is, and it's actually bang on 20 degrees. So there's there's no point in actually just dar dialing arbitrary values in a decade box if you don't have this reference chart. It really doesn't mean anything, right? So let's check the other value, which is let's call it 320 ohms and it should uh, go to in and around uh, 80 degrees. It's hard to tell where that line intersects, but let's dial up. What did I say, 320? Yeah, 320. So, so 0.3 kilo ohms. And of course, that's when the battery cuts it on you, right? So uh, as I mentioned, I'm at uh, 300 ohms here. Three times 100, 300, last time I checked, everything else is zeroed. And according to the graph, it should have been approximately 80 degrees. And in fact, we're at 82 degrees there. So, nice. so there's 130 degrees. And all I've done is actually, uh, I've got zeros across the board, essentially shorting out the uh, engine coolant temp sensor connector. And I'll lift one of the leads. And there's our minus 40 value. So that does make sense. And the fans continue to run because the rate of change on the uh, engine coolant temp uh, sensing is clearly in failure mode now. The car knows that there's no way we could transition between those temperatures. That explains why the fans are actually running even in spite of the fact that the temperature is, uh, is minus 40. So that, that actually makes sense. Okay, so I think I'll leave it at that. I hope that made some sense to you. Okay, so one last thing here I should have mentioned, of course. So after all this mucking about with the... Uh, with a connector on the temp sensor. Shouldn't come as any surprise to anybody that you're gonna end up with a check engine light on. So uh, let's actually see what that is. We'll read the code. And engine coolant temp sensor. Uh, so we've got the high and the low, of course, because um, of course we were shorting it and having an open circuit. So that really shouldn't come as a surprise. I don't think so. Of course, we'll uh, we'll uh, erase those. We'll read them again, and there's no code stored. Thank God, because I don't care to break my car when I'm just doing a wee bit of uh, study here. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Right, this thing. Cheers.